Early childhood education has been a subject of discussion and debate for centuries. Two notable educators in this area are Friedrich Froebel and Maria Montessori. Both Froebel and Montessori emphasized the critical development that takes place during a child's early years, the inherent dignity of each child, and the importance of a child's self-directed activity. Both are known for their use of materials within the educational setting, as well as their view of the teacher as a guide. Friedrich Froebel, a German educational reformer best known as the founder of the first kindergarten, based much of his educational philosophy on his own experiences and observations. Froebel, whose mother died when he was nine months old, viewed that event as a loss that influenced the whole environment and development of his being. His mother's death, combined with a workaholic Lutheran minister for a father, a neglectful stepmother, and a childhood marked by loneliness and isolation, propelled Froebel into introspection at an early age. Froebel, Froebel's belief about the external person and their inner being is a concept on which he reflected often and frequently. Froebel saw education as a means by which a child could begin to understand and to externalize their inner divine nature through self-activity. Froebel notes that his own outer person was in contradiction to his inner nature for much of his childhood. For years, Froebel's religious beliefs caused tension for the philosophical criticism he encountered until he reconciled those for himself in his understanding of nature and its connection to God. He even drew parallels between the growth of plants and the development of humans. Froebel largely aligned with the natural method of education, which was heavily influenced by Johann Pestalozzi, with whom Froebel studied for several years. C.W. Bardeen compares Froebel with Pestalozzi in his 1889 preface to the American edition of Froebel's autobiography. Bardeen notes the many similarities in the lives of these two men, including experiencing a parent's death at a young age, their awkward and unhappy childhoods, how each was thrown into an almost exclusive society of women, their difficulties in administration and finances, and their multiple failures in launching schools that ascribe to their educational philosophies. These philosophies and their practical implementations were similar, though Rousseau's influence on Pestalozzi led him more to skepticism, while Froebel remained deeply pious and firmly asserted that religion should be the foundation of education. Another difference between the two men was Pestalozzi's propensity to experiment with different theories and experience failures from which he could learn, while Froebel was more of a theorist who preferred to meticulously reason out ideas until they fit his overarching philosophy. Play was highly encouraged in Froebel's educational setting along with songs and games. Froebel believed in encouraging children to exercise their minds and bodies, to let children be children. Froebel saw materials as a way to combine education and play. Froebel's materials, which he termed gifts and occupations, are still used in classrooms today, though many have been commer commercialized by companies such as Milton Bradley and have lost some of Froebel's intended purpose. In Froebel's original usage, the gifts and occupations were systematically introduced to children in order to help them conceptualize through concrete forms and to instill the ultimate truths to which Froebel believed these objects pointed. Froebel encouraged children to imitate the actions of adults by baking mud pies, caring for gardens, or constructing various structures. Frank Lloyd Wright, a famous American architect, is said to have developed his understanding of shape, form, and structure due to exposure to a set of Froebel's gifts. Wright has said, the maple wood blocks are in my fingers to this day, attesting to the influence of the Froebel, Froebel blocks which were given to him by his mother. Froebel's life was greatly impacted by women, including his indifferent stepmother, his headmistress and classmates at the girls' school he attended as a boy, and both of his wives. Froebel was joined in developing the gifts for his kindergarten by his wife at the time, Henrietta Wilhelmina Hofmeister. She aided Froebel in his educational endeavors until her death. Froebel later was aided by Louise Levine, who was training to be a kindergarten teacher. Levine and Froebel's relationship of mutual respect led to their eventual marriage. Other prominent women in Froebel's life spread his philosophies to other countries, including the United States, where individuals such as Elizabeth Palmer Peabody, the sister of Horace Mann's wife, asserted the need to make the kindergarten part of all American early childhood education. Like Froebel, Maria Montessori's educational philosophy came out of her own experiences and observations, specifically her studies as a medical doctor and psychiatrist, as well as her work with mentally handicapped children. Montessori observed that children appreciate order and have an intrinsic sense of dignity. Like Froebel, Montessori encouraged self-activity among children, though she prescribed a much more structured environment. 
Sensory training was a critical component to Montessori's curriculum, and she was assisted in developing her sensory materials by Helen Keller. Montessori firmly emphasized that a child should show a readiness and sensitivity to progress to more complex concepts and skills, learning at an individual rate in a prepared educational setting. Today's Montessori schools often have various stations meant to encourage the student's curiosity and hands-on learning in a given category. These schools also highly value the relationship between the parents, the community, and the child, encouraging parents to take an active role in their child's education. Montessori was recognized at the 1915 World's Fair in San Francisco, where a Montessori class was set up as a demonstration. Several historical figures have been impacted by Montessori schools, including Alexander Graham Bell and Eleanor Roosevelt, who each started a Montessori school, as well as Anne Frank, who studied in a Montessori school before going into hiding. Maria Montessori left Italy during World War II and moved to India, where she discussed world peace and the role of education and of children in promoting world peace with none other than Gandhi. Froebel and Montessori have both had a lasting impact on early childhood education. In both educational approaches, there are traces of Enlightenment thinkers as well as classical philosophers. Froebel and Montessori both saw the early childhood years as critical in a person's growth, and each sought to provide the most beneficial educational environment to promote each child's development.